there everybody, this is Graham, also known as The Collector 75, and welcome to another Transformers Generation 1 Pretenders review. Uh, and this one we are doing a classic Pretender. Now, you, I had this one as a kid, and this is my original one from when I was a kid. Um, and I loved it, mainly because of the character in the comic. Now the toy, um, if you look at the toy, it was really just a, a throwaway character, really, as far as toys was concerned. But in the comic, especially the UK one... Um, he did get fleshed out, and then in the US one, he went on to even bigger things. Um, this is, of course, Thunderwing. A very underrated comic, uh, comic um, character, as far as the toy w went. Um, for a long time, he didn't even get an updated version until, my God, about f five years ago, when he first got his first generations figure. And even since then, he hasn't got another figure since. Um, there's been a few third-party offerings. But nothing really. And when consider what this guy was in the comic, you'd think that they would have. But there we go. But still, he is a great figure. I mean, this one that came out, he was a mega pretender. And the, the, the gimmick behind these was is that the pretender itself isn't actually that organic. He's got a few organic bits, but it's more of a just a bigger, larger body that the smaller robot fits into. And it can combine with the shell. Um, and for the most part, it actually works so well. I really regret not getting the Japanese recolor, slight retool of this, which was Black Shadow. Um, I saw it once, £50 back in the late 90s. Um, and at the time, I didn't really like Pretenders, so I weren't that bothered. <clears throat> God, how I, what a mistake that was. 50 quid. You look at, you try and get a Black Shadow now, G1, Japanese Black Shadow. You're looking at 600 if you're lucky. Um and which I wouldn't pay that anyway. So, you know, maybe one day we're lucky, might get a reissue, but I doubt it. But anyway, so this is Thunderwing in his massively combined mode. Now, you can put his other two guns, which I sort of forgot to put on. You can put them in a variety of ways. You can put them like that, which looks a bit odd, or you can put them like this. Um, I usually put them this way around, um, just because it keeps the um, a bit, a bit of symmetry going, like that. You can put them either way around, it doesn't matter. If you can stay on, <clears throat> there we go. So then you get him heavily armed, and he is a massively heavily armed spaceship. This gun is a bit weird putting it there because, as you can see, it's going to blow the cockpit away if it even tries to fire at that angle. So you've got to turn it that way, which is a bit weird. But there we go. Um, and it's just a great looking spaceship. Um, it just looks really, really good. Um, and it gets even better when you actually detach the the front bit off the front which if we concentrate on this first which you can turn this into a bit a bit of a jet itself by just rotating these out um you can then take this little gun off it if you want and stick this silly gun on the top there which looks a bit naff so i don't um but as a little spaceship he's pretty cool you know what i mean it's all right it's very simplistic <coughs> but when it was what was this 88 89 give or take um that's what unfortunately they were aiming for but there we go um now this little robot here of course is thunderwing and the, the that is the outer shell so we're going to transform this guy first um he's got a ridiculously easy transformation you just separate these legs here as you can see uh, mine has got some damage on the inside leg that was my fault when i was a kid i used to do silly things with them and bend his legs out for some reason um, because I didn't know that these were going to become so expensive and um, I was going to be still collecting them when I'm 42. So there we go. But anyway, but that is him in his little robot mode. He's got articulation on the arm, which is good because then he can punch someone and aim his gun, which is always good. But there we go. That is the little robot. We're going to put that over here. Now we come to this. When you detach that, it actually even looks even better as this spaceship here. It just looks so cool. And I really do want the new Titans return. Black Sky Shadow. And I'm hoping that obviously that for Power of the Primes does get re-coloured or re-whatever they called it, retooled into a decent Thunderwing. Um, and I'll be all over that. But this is just so cool. It's just brilliant. It's a great spaceship. Um, you can take that little gun. I'm not going to bother now. But you can plug it into this little port just there if you wanted to. These have retro labels put on because my labels are long since got rubbed off. I did put these in the wrong place. He's supposed to move them up just a bit. But there we go. Don't matter too much. 
Um, but yeah, other than that, he is a cool looking out of shell. Now, unfortunately, when you start to transform this guy into robot mode, it, it does lose a little bit. Now, you do not need to put the little robot inside him, really. It's, it doesn't really matter too much. So we're going to fold those out, fold his little feet out, stand him up, rotate the wings back, um, undo this little section, rotate it back. That frees up this section, click that in, rotate that back. And there we have the outer shell, which is Thunderwing. Now, it looks a little odd. The legs don't move. He's got these weird, spindly, organic-y looking arms. <coughs> um, yeah, and then when you put these massively stupid guns in his hand, they just look so big for him. I would have preferred if you could get a gun looking like it did in the comic, which is quadruple barreled cyclone cannon or whatever the hell he had. Um, and the face, the face is just the most weirdest thing. It just, look at those teeth there, it looks like a vampire-y thing you'd have got on an old B horror movie. Um, loads of the black paint on mine's rubbed off, unfortunately, I could try and repair that. But the, the biggest problem with this is when you turn him around, it's completely, the head is completely hollow. I mean, they, they could have done something better. Obviously, he's got this giant hollow gap, which is where you can put the pretender, which we're going to do now. So we take the little gun out. Uh, just put him over there. We're going to knock him down. If I rotate his head down, I can't remember what I'll do with the arms. So let's just leave him there for the minute. And then we'll have a look. Uh, so you need to open this up. <coughs> right, it does look like we rotate them forwards, so I just think I angle them that way. So then, you know, let's see those guns just fall out those hands. Anyway, right, so then we have to start getting this, and you have to make sure you've got the legs in properly. Then, angle him backwards, like that, and that should just allow you to clip him up, providing you've got everything in the right place. There we go. Then you can do the back one up, rotate that back down, and now it does fill in that gap. But it's still got a hollow head um, and doesn't really do a lot else, really. That is it. Um, yeah, it's a shame, really, that the robot mode, uh, for the sort of character that he was, where he was basically the Matrix holder for the Decepticons um, and turned the Matrix not evil as such, but he was definitely part of that reason why it turned evil. Or was it the other way around? Yeah, I think it was the other way around, really. The Matrix had turned evil and then it called to him to be its new uh, Matrix holder, really. Um, which is blooming good in the old comic. I loved it. Uh, anyway, right, so this is Thunderwing. Um, yeah, he's got articulation on the arms, and that is it. Anyway, this has been Graham, the Collector 75. I shall see you all next time. Um, don't forget, if you've liked this video, give it a big like. And, of course, you can support my channel using the links below. And, of course, uh, I'll see you all next time. Bye for now. <laughs>